how does the universe know if you're spinning? When you're in the Gravitron, why do you feel pushed against the wall? And for all you know-it-alls, the answer isn't centrifugal force, at least not at the fundamental level. The trouble is, it's not clear what the answer is. In 1687, Isaac Newton proposed the following thought experiment. Imagine a bucket filled with water hanging from a tightly twisted cord. Upon release, the bucket spins, but the water remains stationary as viewed by the watcher. But if you wait long enough, the water acquires the motion of the bucket and, consequently, starts to deform, creating a depression in the center and raised edges near the edge of the bucket. To Newton, this implied that rotational motion is absolute. After all, when the bucket was moving relative to the apparently stationary water, the water didn't deform. The water only started to deform, viewed in modern language as experiencing centrifugal force, when the water itself started to rotate. But if motion is relative, then what is it relative to? Newton concluded that this implies motion, at least rotational motion, is indeed absolute. Now fast forward 200 years. Physicist and philosopher Ernst Mach objected to Newton's conclusion, suggesting that the only real implication of the thought experiment is that the centrifugal forces must arise in the presence of motion relative to the motion of the fixed stars, i.e. the rest of the universe. And none other than the GOAT, Albert Einstein himself, coined the term Mach's principle to refer to this idea. Furthermore, it's evident that this principle actually served as a partial inspiration for Einstein's development of general relativity. So the question remains, how does the universe know if you're spinning? According to Einstein's general relativity, the motion of the distant stars really does determine what motion is inertial, meaning non-rotating and non-accelerating, and what motion would have fictitious forces, like the centrifugal force. According to the Einstein field equations, the positions and motions of all of the matter in the universe affect the curvature of space-time, which in turn determines which motion is inertial, as it moves along geodesic paths, and which motion isn't. The prototypical example of this effect is the lens thurring effect inside a large rotating shell. In Newtonian mechanics, only mass contributes to gravitational effects, and so an observer inside the shell shouldn't be affected by the rotation of the mass, at least according to the shell theorem. However, in the context of general relativity, both mass and motion contribute to gravitational effects. In particular, rotating masses cause spacetime to swirl in a precise technical sense. The upshot is that for an observer inside the rotating shell that's stationary with respect to the fixed stars outside the shell, they feel both a centrifugal force and a Coriolis force, exactly as one might expect if the motion of distant masses determine whether or not the fictitious forces are felt. Extrapolating, it then becomes plausible that it's the motion of all of the matter in the surrounding universe that determines which frames are inertial and which aren't. In that respect, the gravitron isn't. And so Mach's principle is vindicated. Inertial motion is determined by the matter distribution of the universe, right? Well, essentially, yes, at least in the sense of Mach's principle as presented here. But because the principle was never formally laid out by Mach, the exact prescription of the principle means different things to different people. In fact, there are at least 10 different versions of Mach's principle, of which I have only presented evidence for one. Nonetheless, the idea that it is the distribution and motion of distant matter that determines inertial motion here seems to hold true in Einstein's relativity. And that's good enough to answer the question for me. How does the universe know if you're spinning? When you're...